Hello everyone, my name is Pixelrift and welcome back to the Empire's SMP. I hope you're all having a good day. Today we are over here in the desert where I feel like having a slightly quieter episode than the one we had last time. I feel like doing something a little bit more domestic, but still very cool because my desert kingdom here has been a collection of unconnected buildings for a little while and I want to do a little bit more terraforming around here in the desert. What I want to do is start terraforming some of the area starting from the riverbank kind of area but maybe finding ways of connecting up these buildings and I've been sketching out a few things in my creative copy of this world just to see what we can put together, how we can make this place look a little bit more alive and lush and thriving as opposed to the otherwise fairly barren desert that it is now. Because I don't really want this place to feel like a desert. I want it to feel like an oasis. I want the land around here to be lush and fertile and I want to put some more interesting features into the landscape of this area. We've already started doing that a little bit with the dripstone and the azalea, the use of moss around some of these buildings. I want to continue all of that and we're going to be doing a fair amount of terraforming with blocks like this just piling them up in different places and maybe including a little bit of water so the moss makes a bit more sense so it feels like the landscape is a little bit more fertile but there's so much you can do with stuff like dripstone just to change up the vibe of an area and then we throw some water into the mix and suddenly everything starts to pop with color and life. I've also been thinking a bit about flowering azalea and how we can bring that into play, not just in the shrubs and the flowering leaves, but also taking those colours and maybe bringing some other blocks into play. I have a couple in mind that will really enhance the natural vibe of this area, and that's probably going to take us out in search of a coral reef, but we're going to grab a whole bunch of other blocks besides that because I want paths to connect some of these areas and that will also help us to shape out some of the landscape here and decide where we want to put some other buildings. I've also got to go and mine some more copper because we are running dangerously low and if I want to do any more building the accent colors around here need to be consistent so I need to go and get myself a little bit more copper here and there. So we've got lots of blocks to gather. I'm going to head away and do a bit more of that and I'll see you guys once we've done a little more work around here.
Now I gotta say, this... This I am a fan of. I'm gonna go up in the scaffolding so you can see this from a slightly different angle, but... A little bit of curvature to the path and these gardens on either side, flanked by, or kind of backed off by dripstone there, and a little bit of water in a pool, maybe a little fountain or two. I am in love with this. It certainly makes a change from the harsh environment of the desert, the sandy kind of vibe, but we still get a bit of heat preserved in a scene like this. And maybe it's the sandstone that I'm using for the buildings, or maybe it's just the fact that the... Like, the terrain feels a little bit more kind of shrubby, I guess. I don't know. We're not going, like, overboard with the trees. I'm thinking about having a couple of trees here and there, maybe kind of surrounded by this and in the middle of a, a kind of lake of water just to keep it a little cool. But I really like the way this came together. And the path looks a little bit messy. You'd maybe want the path to be a little bit more kind of brick-like. But a single material tended to make the whole thing look a little bit too plain for me. So I really wanted to have... A lot of different materials worked in here, and boy am I happy with this. One last thing I wanted to do, and something that's going to take me a little further afield than I expected to go, is that these mossy cobblestone slabs here are actually waterlogged, because I want to get some coral to place on those. There's a type of coral that I think looks really good next to the flowering azalea leaves and shrubs. It has that kind of like purple colour. I put an allium in here as well, but I'm thinking we'll probably end up having some purple bubble coral around here. And that means I'm going to have to go out in search of a warm ocean, which is not something I have found yet, and it's certainly not in the Ocean Queen's domain for what I can tell, although she might have... I don't know, maybe she'll have issues with me using it a little bit later. But either way, I want to get some bubble coral worked in here on waterlogged slabs to preserve its colour. And I think a warm ocean is going to be my next port of call. Pretty happy with this though. So I'm going to grab a fresh shulker box. I started to put together a pathing shulker box, which is going to have all of the materials we need to make some more of these paths. I still need to get a bit more of the pointed dripstone, of course. But I've basically just been pulling whatever I can out of caves when I see it. So now we've got a fresh shulker box. And yes, I I do have a silk touch pick now. I've been basically replacing all of my gear with the villagers and I'm fairly certain that I've gotten back to where I was before gear wise, give or take depth strider, which is going to be a bit of a shame right now. I think maybe we can go and find ourselves a warm ocean. Exploring the ocean is always a good excuse for me to find some shipwrecks and pick up the occasional heart of the sea because I still need them for conduits, but eventually I found what I was looking for. Here we are, and these places are actually very easy to spot at night, so going out here while the sun was setting was probably the best idea I could have had. And now what we're looking for is the bubble coral. It's kind of the fullest looking of all of the plants except for maybe the tube coral there and we want that specifically not the fans not any of the other plants like the the kind of brain coral stems or anything like that those all look a little bit too sparse we are looking for the ones like that that almost look like they could be blossoms on the top of cacti and while we're not going to be able to place them that way unfortunately I do really want to get hold of a bunch of those and I don't have depth strider or respiration right now so we are probably going to have to do this fairly precisely just dive on down like so get hold of that with silk touch return to the surface catch our breath and then keep diving precisely for each of these bubble coral pieces if we bring a couple of coral fans home then that's no big deal of course i know a couple of ways we can put those to use but aside from that i think we're probably just going to go diving for the bubble coral and this is going to take me a minute or two to get as many as i want to bring home so i'm just going to keep gathering here and i'll see you folks back at the desert so in the end, I didn't even really need to bring a shulker box with me because all I was going for was the bubble coral. We snagged a couple of other things on the way, including another heart of the sea. And I have some sea pickles, which I think might fit into this whole, like, garden diorama feel a little bit. But if we put those on there now, the waterlogging of those slabs will prevent them from turning grey and dying, which I think is perfect. Look at the way they fit in next to some of the azalea blossoms, though. I really like the way that looks, and just having these occasional pops, like, we don't want them to be front and centre all the time. I just like the idea of them being interspersed amongst all of the leaves here, and that's going to be a really perfect place for them to go. And hopefully I've waterlogged all of these slabs so we don't get any of them turning grey. Perfect looks like I have, okay? <laughs> they would have done it by now, so looks like we are good. Little desert blossoms. I like them a lot, and it makes up for the fact that we don't have the spore blossoms 
in 1.17 yet, although, I don't know, keep your eyes peeled, because they are in creative mode, so we could add them in using a data pack. I'm thinking maybe putting the sea pickles on top of the melons might work. I know people do this with pumpkins. I don't know how it feels with melons, as though the stem has been broken off or something like that. I kind of like the idea of these melons kind of growing naturally, so maybe we won't do that. Maybe we'll just put a couple of sea pickles just around here. Unfortunately, they have to be waterlogged themselves before they'll emit light, so we still need to do something about lighting in this area, but that's why we've got other sources of lighting. Maybe a couple of lanterns along the path here, because conduits are just going to be too expensive to put on the average pathway, but I think this is, this is coming together really nicely. I like the way this feels so far. Yeah, from above, those corals really show up nicely. I like that a lot, and I, I am thinking about the overall picture of this area once I get myself my own set of elytra and I can fly over this area. I really want it to look beautiful and lush from above, so I think we're doing pretty well at that so far. I think I'm going to go away and do a little bit more of the pathing here, and I'm thinking maybe alongside here where I've left this bank of sand, this kind of wall here, we might end up putting another little house, just working on some residential buildings here instead of worrying about everything having a function, because if we want our empire to look mighty and built up, then it's going to have to have some buildings that don't actually have a purpose gameplay-wise, so I'm going to go away and work on that a little bit more, and I'll see you guys on the other side.
Hey folks, welcome back. I hope you've enjoyed the time lapses in this episode. This house is nearly done. There are a couple of finishing touches I want to make to it, and they all require things that I don't really have right now. First of all, I need a little bit of cyan wool, which I've been getting occasionally from a cyan sheep that I died nearby, but I honestly want to be able to trade for some wool with Scott Smajer, who has set up, I believe, the server's only wool farm. The other thing I need is some peace and quiet, because these guys have been around basically every other day just to check on the building and see how well we're doing here. And I am not doing very well, not with you guys around, so get the heck out of here, Pillager Patrol. I don't want you here. Honestly, no matter how many of their banners I put up inside my house, they don't really seem to get the picture. So with the Pillager Patrol out of the way, I've been thinking a little bit more about about what I want to do in this episode. The last thing I want to do is something I've been putting off for a little while, but in a sense I'm kind of known for it and it needs to be done. I need to go to the nether and get hold of some ancient debris because I want to upgrade my tools to netherite now that I have a decent set of tools. I've got silk touch and fortune on the pickaxes. I've got a pretty decent sword needs looting, but it's not too bad. The hoe, the axe, the shovel, they're all pretty much where I want them to be, except for maybe having a silk touch axe instead of fortune. But I'd love to start getting some netherite on the go here, not because I'm worried about anybody else attacking me, but mostly because it's just more durable and it means I have to spend a little bit less time repairing my tools every so often without a decent XP farm aside from the furnaces in my blast furnace smelter. So I'm going to throw a bunch of my stuff back into the chests here and we're going to go back to the nether. And as I come through to the nether it seems like the pillagers are determined to follow me wherever I go because one has even showed up in the nether so I'll have to take care of him first and thankfully there wasn't a pillager captain here. I need to protect my portal a little bit better. And we're going to head over the ridge and down to towards the warped forest, hopefully trading a little bit with piglins as I go because it would really be nice to have a couple of fire resistance potions to deal with this and I don't know if we have any potions left at the house, I didn't see any when I was there. This guy over here looks like a likely candidate and this also gets us nice and close to lava level, so let's throw a bunch of gold on the ground and see if this one will give us a fire resistance potion. Well it took a lot of trading and cramming this guy in a hole but I finally got hold of a decent amount of bartered goods and we got two splash potions potions of fire resistance. I've got a couple of water bottles there as a massive fake out, but it looks like this guy is going to be fine with us just breaking the shulker box and walking away, thankfully. Hopefully none of the other piglins in the area saw that, and we can get on with our netherite mining. And there are a couple of areas around here that I might want to start that. We want to dig away from the lava lakes, if at all possible, to give ourselves a little bit of room for a tunnel down, and I think... I'm going to start a tunnel down about here. That would seem like the most sensible place for it for the moment. And Scott Smajer has just logged in and said it was f funny seeing me here, which I don't know if that means he always sees me online at this time and he's just joking around about that or I don't know if he's figured out that I've waxed all his copper yet. But I have just dug right into my first vein. Like this is the staircase and this is my first block of ancient debris on Empire's SMP. Look at that. There we go. Yeah. And if this is a vein of three, that'll be super lucky. But if not, oh well. Well, I guess Scott now knows that I'm in the nether, so hopefully he doesn't come find me and start looking for answers. But if he does, he will find me laden with TNT because I've got myself a bunch of TNT from raiding various temples across my desert. And I've decided to blow up a few sections of the underneath of the nether here just so I can get hold of a decent chunk of ancient debris. I honestly don't know how far 52 TNT is going to get me, but I could always petition my server mates for some more if I need some. I'm fairly certain a few of them will want to trade a little bit of stuff for what I've got, and I do have plenty of sand, so maybe we can work out some sort of deal there. If all else fails, we could resort to using the bed method, but I think you folks know how I feel about the bed method if you've watched this channel for any length of time. I think that will probably be long enough for our first tunnel, so I'm just going to lay these down maybe three or four blocks apart each time and We'll see how we get on. And here we go with the first detonation of our TNT salvo, and it looks like it's going pretty well so far. Not seeing any debris immediately, but I expect we'll uncover one or two as we go here. Yeah, there we go. There's our first uncovered vein. Looks like we've got a couple more down there as well, and if nothing else, this is a really great way of getting hold of blackstone. Lovely little vein of three up here. We could also be doing this along a chunk border. I didn't necessarily select the location for this netherite mine particularly well, but... 
yeah, looks like we are... We're actually just kind of along a chunk border here, so chances are we might run into a couple of bonus veins here and there. When you've only got this much TNT on your side, though, it kind of becomes immaterial whether you're mining along a chunk border or not, because you're not uncovering as much terrain as you could be. Here is one more debris, though, and it looks like we've got one down there as well. There might be more hidden behind that patch of gravel. At least we now have enough for one and a half netherite ingots, which means we are on our way to getting two netherite pickaxes. Looks like one is all we're getting from that vein as well. Never mind, though, that is seven so far, and... If we detonate a little bit more TNT, chances are we'll get at least one more. You beauty, there it is. And there might be a little bit more hidden in the walls there as well. So that's that's going to be enough for this first mining session at least. Oh, looks like we have a touch more down there as well. And thankfully no real need for the fire resistance potion yet. The nether has been kind to us so far. That, I believe is 10 ancient debris total that's yeah that's not bad that's really really good going for our first mining session now you might be wondering if i'm planning on getting enough netherite blocks for a beacon the answer is of course not or at least not a tier 4 beacon but i do fancy having a couple of blocks of netherite around i think it'd be fun to either tempt or challenge my server mates for those or potentially even build with them because i mean i've already built with diamond blocks in this series what else can we build with that's going to be ludicrously expensive at this point I'd settle for just having two more so that we can get hold of our third netherite ingot and depending on how many we find in this vein looks like it is just one we are one short maybe maybe just maybe we can keep going by mining this area out instead of exploding the whole thing because I would really like to finish this with three netherite tools I think that'd be perfect oh and it looks like <laughs> it looks like somebody else has had a similar idea I've just come out of this tunnel into what looks like Somebody having mined using the bed method. Well, looks like they won't have left any stones unturned down here. It seems like they've been mining north-south, so I think I'll continue going east to west and see if there's anything they missed in the walls of this cavern. Hey, there we go. There's one they didn't find, and it looks like it may just be one, which is perfect. That gets us 12 ancient debris. We can finally get back to the overworld and make ourselves some netherite ingots. Not bad, not bad. I've got some in the blast furnace. I'm just going to split it up between these two and and it's already starting to come in. We've even got some nether gold ore that I could smelt up alongside it, and that will go some way to providing the gold ingots for this. And with a little bit of extra gold from our stores, we have three netherite ingots. Three awesome stuff. Now, what can we do with that? One of those, one of those. I'm thinking maybe the sword, but honestly, I think the shovel is going to be worthwhile because I have so much sand to dig here in the desert that having a netherite shovel seems like the way to go. Now, do I already have... A smithing table over here. I guess I don't because I probably made one of those for a village and then left it behind. But it should just be four wood and two iron. Yep, there we go. And I think I'll probably put this in the blacksmith's foundry kind of building over here. And I think we'll probably do some interiors for this between now and the end of the week. So that'll be one netherite fortune pickaxe, one netherite silk touch pickaxe, and one netherite silk touch shovel. Perfect. So happy that we've got hold of some netherite and the extra durability is going to be a big help believe me we've got so much to build so much to dig and we have a couple of projects to complete here and there but i think this has been a great episode and i think we'll probably leave it there the kingdom is looking prettier than ever and so are our tools folks thank you so much for watching this episode of empire's smp my name has been pixorifs please don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it subscribe if you want to see more and i'll see you guys soon take care bye for now